We've heard over the, the last couple of weeks a uh, couple of testimonies uh, from Carol and from Lily uh, about uh, their, uh, their walk with God and everything, and have uh, been very enlightened by, by their sharing of how God has manifest himself in their lives uh, in the area of uh, time and talents and, and treasure. And uh, we are in the midst of our, I guess you could say, stewardship campaign. And next week will be our Pledge Sunday. I choose not to use the term um, Stewardship Sunday because really every day is Stewardship Day when you think of it. And by that I mean don't hear the word Stewardship is just dealing with money because our stewardship has to do with all of life. All of our free time, our work, uh, everything. Uh, stewardship of the way we drive down the road. So pray for me as I drive down the road. Because right? <laughs> I do tend to be one of those guys that that's the area that I get challenged in rather re- regularly. <laughs> stewardship of time and talents and treasure. And, and how do we not just deal with those things, but what is the attitude that we have about stewardship of everything, of all of life? Somebody said recently that he was reminded about that it would be good for him to remind himself often about the sovereignty of God. I think that's good advice, to be quite honest with you. For us as individuals to remind ourselves regularly, maybe even daily, God is sovereign. That helps us, I think, especially when we encounter trouble in life. (laughs) That God is sovereign. When we encounter trouble, it's a good thing to ask ourselves, God, what do you want me to get from this? Why are you, in your sovereignty, why are you allowing this to happen to me? And even when he calls us to deal with good stewardship of time and talents and treasure, why do you want me to do thus and so with my time? Why do you want me why have you given me these particular talents? Or maybe stretching that category just a little bit, why do I feel a call to enter into this, the use of these gifts, which I've never used before? Or maybe to to give my time into this particular ministry or this particular activity that I've never really felt called to? Why are you asking me to use the money that you've given me, which, by the way, all the money that he's given us is his, right? None of it belongs to us. None of it. Can you say that after me? None of it. None of it it is ours. It all belongs to him. And so when he says, Andy, I want you to spend your money. Spend the money I've given you. See, See how easy it is. It's not my money. Spend the money I've given you on this, that, or the other things. Yeah, but Lord, I had plans for that money. (laughs) Uh, And he says, yeah, I've got plans too. (laughs) And I'm trying to help you live into into my plans. You know, to a certain degree, I think there's all of these readings today really do talk about God's sovereignty on All Saints Sunday. Uh, All these passages are good passages. Uh, that can be, excuse me, <coughs> can be uh, read, often are read at funerals. Passage from Isaiah, very common one to be read at a funeral. Uh, that mountain that's made reference uh, there, on this mountain I will prepare a feast for all peoples. That mountain, we believe, is where Jesus was crucified. It was believed where he was basically paid penalty of your sin and my sin and thereby we can enter into that feast as we as we enter into the gift of that of that eternal life that Jesus won for us Psalm 24 speaks about it because of all people he wants all people to dwell with him and only he can make that possible only God can make that possible for all people to dwell with him passage from Revelation talked about the new city the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven and and the previous was all, has all been done away with. Only somebody who's sovereign can make something like that happen. However, it may develop itself in an individual's experience. And then we come to this gospel reading about the, 
the familiar story, I assume it's familiar with everybody, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. We picked up right in the middle of that story about how Jesus uh, came to him after he waited four days uh, after the invitation, the bidding from Martha and Mary, come, hey, your friend is ill. <coughs> Jesus waited a number of days, and he was had already been dead for four days by the time he got there. As I looked on that, uh, uh, I was drawn to just a couple of the, of the phrases that I think uh, can help us because of what Jesus experienced when he came to the tomb of Lazarus. Two times the passage reads that he was deeply moved. And also one time he says he was greatly troubled. Deeply moved and greatly troubled. You know that, that phrase, deeply moved, if we were to translate that as literally as possible, commentators say it would be something like, snort like a horse. That might stretch our understanding <laughs> just a little bit. Snort like, I don't think Jesus snorted like a horse. <laughs> but when does a horse snort? Generally, the idea behind it is a horse maybe that has been in battle and is angry. The bottom line word behind that word is angry. Jesus was angry, not so much at the people, but angry because of what sin has wrought in the life of people. When God meant for joy, peace, happiness, and fellowship with God all the time, death, physical death, never to enter in, and he was angry that that sin brought not only physical death, but a separation from God. He was angry at what sin had done to all of humankind. Angry at what the ravages of sin would bring to all people. And then that word, that phrase, greatly troubled, uh, kind of means greatly agitated and hated that people were under the sin, the curse of that sin, the curse of death because of sin. And the only way to overcome it, freedom, was by Jesus going to the cross. Jesus said to uh, Martha, well, verse 39 reads, Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha said, this is the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? If you believed, you would see the glory of God. A lot of times, our belief, our trust, remember that word belief means trust. Our trust in God enables us to have eyes that see. Earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus opened the eyes of a blind man. Of one of the miracles listed in John's Gospel. And here he's saying, but look for the spiritual significance and let me, sh let me show you. Let me show you. Jesus, in, in his humanness, uh, was subject to everything that we are subject to. But in his faithfulness, in, in his divinity, so to speak, uh, when God said, I'm, the Father says, I'm going to do something, and I want you to, in a sense, speak it into existence, that's what happened there at the raising of Lazarus. Somehow God the Father told Jesus, raise him from the dead, call him forth from the grave. And the Father brought forth Lazarus, showing his sovereignty over death, physical death, and every aspect of life. Every aspect of your life in my life. So when God calls us to step out in faith and to maybe do something that we've never done before, uh, maybe engage in an activity, a, a exercise maybe a talent that maybe we didn't know we had or never been tested with, use our finances in ways that go against our plan, maybe we'll have eyes to see eyes to see his glory. You know, years ago, years ago, I remember back living in, in Palm Bay, Florida, 
uh, speaking about uh, testing and being tested in the area of my finances. Uh, I was still pretty young in the Lord. I was working for United Parcel Service. A lot of you probably know this story. Uh, but uh, we, we uh, coming alive in the Lord. And the whole idea of tithing was getting new to me. And there were times when the end of the month came. Um, actually, at that time, I was getting a paycheck every two weeks. Uh, so every once in a while, you know how that works. Every two weeks, you get a third paycheck every once in a while. But you tend to set your budget up on uh, two paychecks a month. And so, but there were times when I saw the bills come and due at the end of the month, or I knew they were coming, and I said, boy, you know, if I try to do this tithing thing, there's not going to be cash at the end of the month. And there were times I said, okay, I'm going to cut back on my giving. I'm, going to, I'm not going to tithe. I'm not going to give what I promised the church I would give. And you know what? That robbed me of my peace. It just robbed me. And so one time, I know at least one time, it probably happened more than once, but uh, one time made that decision going the other way. So I, I, if, if this... If God is true to his word, I should be able to give him what's already his, and he'll figure out a way to meet the bills that I'm expecting at the end of the month. And so I did that. Wrote out the check for the full time. And lo and behold, what happens that the bill is, that I'm expecting is maybe late, and I move it into the next month, and there's a little bit more cash that month. Or maybe this happened at least one time. Maybe it's happened to some of you here. I got a refund from something. I think it was insurance. Something. There had been a change in, the, I don't know, the vehicles or whatever. They got a refund before the end of the month showed up. And now the cash was there to meet all the bills. I remember one other, other time where uh, uh, I made a promise. This doesn't have to do with tithing or giving to the church, but I made a promise to a buddy uh, working at UPS. Uh, I'd left my lunch at home on a Monday or something like that, or Tuesday, whatever, and I didn't have any cash in my wallet. And, and I mentioned it to a guy before, the trucks all left the, the center, and he said, well, here's, here's five bucks, you know, get yourself some lunch today. I said, okay, I'll, I'll give it back to you tomorrow, I promise. And uh, um, later that day, um, so my truck was parked outside, and this was after lunch, I had used, already used that $5 that he gave me. And uh, uh, after lunch, the truck was parked outside and somebody backed into the truck. Didn't do hardly any damage at all. But they were an, an individual with integrity. They came into the store where I was making a delivery and said, I just did this. Um, I'm sorry. You know, I'll take care of it. Because at those days, I'm sure it's probably still true today, if you come back into the center with a truck that is damaged more than was when it left, well, that's grounds for immediate termination if you don't call it in and everything like that. He said, I said, don't worry about it, I'll, t I'll take care of it. We, we deal with these things. And I called the center and everything like that before. Got off the phone with, with the center and the fella that had backed into the truck was still there. He says, it's all, it's all okay, there's no problem. Uh, they'll, they'll take care of it because I told him it was inconsequential. You couldn't even see it but I wanted to make sure. And he pulls out his wallet, this fellow says, well, here, I just want to say thanks. Here's, here's five bucks, here's lunch. <laughs> so God provides, God provides. Us. And sometimes he, he challenges us in our finances. Andy, do you really need that thing that you were planning to buy? Well, okay, maybe not. Maybe I'll wait a little longer, uh, save up a little bit more. But those are things that happens because well, God is sovereign. David, back in the psalm somewhere, says, I have never seen those who trust in the Lord to go hungry. That's a loose paraphrase, basically. I've never seen those who trust in the Lord to go hungry. I think that's what we, we, we see, the sovereignty of God being played out here in this passage from John's Gospel. We celebrate today the fact that God is sovereign and 
the fact that our loved ones who have depended on Jesus, well, they're going to be, in a sense, waiting for us when we get to heaven and maybe stand at the door when we pass through the door. They're in the place where there is no crying or sighing. It's only Jesus can make that promise to us. It's only God the Father. And so we give thanks for that. One of the ways we give thanks is that we live into the image or the, the, uh, the example that they have given us of being faithful. So I want you to pause for just a moment and think about somebody in your history, maybe a relative, may just be a friend, somebody that you know, somebody that you knew, that's gone on to glory, that has been an inspiration to you to live faithful, to step out in faith, to be a good steward, if you permitted me to say it that way, good steward of time and talents and treasure. Because as we step out in trust, he frees us up, frees us up to live into that life that he calls us to, to live into the forgiveness that we maybe need to give, to be, to be a help, to be joyful, to serve, to give, to live into the life that he calls us to. And right now, he's calling us to not only consider how we're going to financially support this parish next year, but also with this Saturate program. You were wondering whether I was going to get back to that today, didn't you? At least some of you were. I've tried two times to show you a video that didn't work. Yes, I'm going to try a third time to see if it works. Do you ha- is, it, is, it, is it a go, Samantha, do you think? Uh, you think so. Okay. Well, I promise you if it fails this time, we're, I'm not bringing it back again. <laughs> but I am going to try to show you. It's a three-minute video, three minutes, 40 seconds, something like that. So, Samantha, whenever you can pull that up, just, uh, just uh, take, take, take it off. And this is an area of time that we're being asked about, and this is an area of, of maybe talents, may just be help. That's it. Go ahead and play. God, give us sound. <laughs> sound, Samantha. It worked earlier this morning. <laughs> There's some, okay, um, it did work earlier this morning. Yeah, she tested it before the service. I give up. <laughs> Never mind. Still no sound. Still no sound. That's feedback. Still no sound. I don't know why I worked earlier, didn't work today. (laughs) Well, regardless, um, we are stewards. We are stewards of our time and talents and treasure. And uh, uh, if you want to know more, and I'm going to ask you, for those of you who would like to be involved in this Saturday program, even though you may not know what it is yet, (laughs) <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you to come early next Sunday, uh, because next Sunday, starting at 9 o'clock, we're, we are going to um, get it, uh, try to come up with a plan and, and get boots on the ground to start moving, moving forward uh, with this. Um, but lastly, you are also, we are also stewards of our vote. And as John mentioned earlier, I'm not going to tell you how to vote. Maybe some of you would like me to do that. Maybe some of you would grateful I don't do that. But regardless, if we are stewards of all God has given us, we are stewards of how we deal with this word as well. And voting is a manifestation of how we live out God's word. And so to, uh, to, uh, I ask you to go go vote if you haven't already. Many of us have probably voted early or we use absentee ballots, but if you haven't, go vote Tuesday. Vote your values. And be the best you can, best stewards of the principles in the scripture that the values that we embrace are values that God God gives us in his holy word. As we do that, we will see God's glory. Again, the words of Jesus, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? 
I pray that all of us in the coming weeks and months can say, I have seen the glory of God in my own life. Let me share some with you. Maybe use those areas of testimony to share with people, to build them up in their walk with Christ, and to uh, maybe draw people to Jesus. This coming week, you should get a letter from us, uh, from members for sure. If we have your mailing address and you're a, a friend of the Solid Rock Church, you'll probably get a letter too with the pledge card in it, but that's, you'll see how, how that goes. But let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you for those, our family, our friends that we have known that have lived faithfully. May we be inspired by their their lives, the witness that they have given to us of their life in Christ, as we remember them later on in the service, we ask that they would grow in, in their knowledge and love of you, even as they're home with you in heaven, because you are infinite, and we will never know you fully. It will be a continuing experience of growth in you, Lord Christ. We thank you. And so come, Holy Spirit, bless us that so we might be a means of you blessing others through us. Strengthen your church. Expand your kingdom worldwide. It's all in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. You please stand. <clears throat>